Hi everyone, welcome to Being Youthful. I am Kim Beegler, the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I'm sitting here in the mill in Halsey, Oregon, ready to talk some wool for the week. So uh, if you're new, thank you so much for finding me and taking a few minutes to listen and see if you like. I will talk a lot about wool. If you like wool and yarn, you're in the right place. And if you are coming back, thank you. I'm so glad that I haven't driven you crazy yet. <laughs> and hopefully I'm giving you good information and content and all those things. So please don't forget to subscribe, to like, to comment. I love the comments. Um, and I have some to share with you all today. So let's get right to it. In this episode, I am going to, we're gonna do a little follow up on the e-spinners that I talked about last time. I'm wearing new uh, bifocal contacts. I'm trying them out. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, this is, I think, day three. It's, it's an adjustment for sure. Okay, we're gonna follow up on the e-spinners. We are going to, I, I have some videos for you from the draw frame here inside the mill when I was playing the other day. Uh, I'm Some blending board stuff, because I said I would do a little carding. Not as much carding as I hoped, but um, some blending board stuff. I wanted to show you washing, just like a sample wash of a coop worth fleece. Oh, and I took a little video from the farm this morning. So um, a little bit of everything, not so much mail videos. I may have an extra one, we'll see. Ni I brought Nigel to work today, one of our small dogs. And uh, he's been coming to work more because he's getting older and he has anxiety. He's up in the very front store front window right now, which is funny. And when we pulled up, Miss Wishy, there she is. Hi, Wish. <laughs> She's trying to crawl on my lap. Um, anyway, Wish was in the window, so um, they can just watch everything that's going by. And they're actually getting along pretty well considering. Um, okay. E-spinners. So let's follow up. And I wanted to share some of the things that you all said and um, just throw, th pop in a few other things. So First off, I did get, well, we'll talk about what you all said, because it's more important. It's more important what you all said in comment to what I was saying. I hope I'm like super lighted out. Oh, well, I have the light on because it's dark and rainy today. And um, maybe that's a little better. Ooh, ooh, not on the knitwear, wishy. Okay, so Susan from Wild Cottage Knitting. She also has a podcast. She has a, a vlog. She has a YouTube channel. So check her out, Wild Cottage Knitting. I'm pretty sure is her um youtube uh so she said she spins on an ashford e3 spinner and loves it she doesn't have a wheel any longer due to physical issues but i also have an electric eel 6 that she's collecting up next time she comes to the states so i'm going to talk about the e6 -E in a minute that's from the same company that makes the nano that the little mini one i showed you last time um she said that a friend of hers is doing spinning workshops and thinks that the e6 -E is good and pretty affordable, which it is. We'll talk about that for new hand spinners. So if you're, we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, she's also, and especially for those struggling with normal wheels. So there you go. I'll talk about the EE6 in a minute, um, but there's another teacher saying that EE6 that, um, by Dreaming Robot seems to be a good alternative for people that are not wanting to spin on a traditional spinning wheel. Um, so Ms. Mark Twain 95 said she just bought the, I shouldn't say she, well, it does say Ms. Anyway, whoever Ms. Mark Twain 95 is bought the EEW6. So this is a hot topic. Really liked it. It's much heftier than the Nano. So let me show you the Nano because I did bring it again because there were some questions about this. I'm going to unplug her. So here is the Nano. So this is the mini one that I showed. If you didn't watch last episode, then go pop over there and take a peek. So the Nano is by Dreaming Robots. Obviously it's this little mini thing and I was pretty uh, adamant that I don't think, and I think that that's the general consensus. This is not, this small size, the Nano 2, not a great wheel for beginners. They make an EE6 and he did just put out an email saying he's coming out with it even newer version, but not for a while. So the EE6 is a bigger version of this, better for a beginner. The beautiful thing about these wheels by Dreaming Robots is they are affordable. I wrote down, so the, the, the full size, the EE6 is $300, which is cheap for an e-spinner. 
and I don't mean cheap, but it's inexpensive. This I think is like 130, not for beginners. Um, so the EE6 definitely is a potential for a beginner. Um, it has a bigger motor. It's a little heftier because this one's pretty light. And uh, um, she also said that the e-spinner was the only option for her because I'm saying her again, I'm just assuming, but whoever this is, um, treadling just triggers chronic pain too much. So that's another great reason for e-spinners, for people who can't sit down for long um, because of whatever, all the different issues that we could have. I know I certainly have lower back pain and it can bother me. I have to be very mindful. Um, you can stand with an e-spinner. Like you can just put this on the counter and sit and stand, sit and, st and stand. Um, if you have chronic pain in different ways, these are great. If you can't treadle, if you have mobility issues. So there's a lot of reasons e-spinners are a wonderful option besides just being fun and portable. Um, so DJ Carter 2003 said, I have two Daedalus and that was what I showed one of, I showed a Daedalus in the last one and absolutely love them. They are my ride spin or die e-spinner. This uh, the Starling that I was using is no longer available, which is true. And I should have mentioned it in the last one. That e-spinner was one of their early ones. So they now have extra volumes of them. Um, the newest version can be flat packed and has a computerized foot controller um, plus other upgrades. So, and this person has owned the EEW6 and also tried the Ashford and is a Daedalus all the way. All right, I'm doing an awful job of reading these, huh? I'm not really reading them. I'm sort of translating them. Bear with me. Uh, and then um, Pat House. Nope. Pat House said something else and I lost it. Oh, I know that Pat was wondering about the, the weight of these because Pat said that a friend, she was watching a friend spin and the wheel and the wheel was moving. So this one has a battery pack, which I should have showed you. So I ordered a battery pack, which you order separately. And then you can buy like a stand for your battery pack. So this black part is an addition to the wheel. The battery pack is in there. The battery pack has some weight to it. And so it does make this move a lot less. If you are just using the blue portion of the spinner, it's really lightweight and it's easy. It does kind of walk a bit more. It does have little suctions on it. Um, but if you, so if you have a good suction spot, anyway, something to take into account. Same with the EE6 is that you could add the battery on and it's going to add extra heft. And I'm pretty sure, I believe there's people on Etsy. Somebody can comment, um, where you got your base from. I had a local friend who had a friend that was making them for everybody. So, um, anyway, there's a little bit about that. So once you have the battery on, things do move a little less but um, all that taken into account. Okay, so that was people's thoughts on these wheels. And I, I know there's a lot of people that come into the mill that have the Ashford and they love them. Um, I think it, uh, probably a lot of it is if, if you get one and you love it, then you stop there and you don't try a bunch of other ones. So um, I did get down the prices, average prices uh, for wheels. So the Daedalus, to the get in price on one of their wheels. So the base model is about 700 to get into. Uh, a Hanson, which I don't have a example of, but um, they are about a thousand dollars to get into. An Ashford e-spinner is around 850. And here's the kicker, the Dreaming Robots, the one that, that has, it, it's about 300. So, which is tail is gonna hit the microphone. So you can see um, there's a big price variation. They're not cheap. So to be able to find one that's gonna work for you that's affordable, there are options. And I think the Dreaming Robots is one of the great options for affordable e-spinner. Okay, I think that's that. Um, I have some viewer questions too, which are pretty quick, but I thought I'd jump in on them real quick. So Pat, also, long story short, she sent a fleece off to a mill and I think it was a fine wool fleece. Mill returned it and there were a lot of neps. And so she was asking if there's anything that can be done to save the fleece. 
I'm going to first say that um, it may not have been the mill's fault. I'm always going to say this because I own a mill, right? And um, a lot of it is the fleece. Also, if the fleece had weak tips or had a break in it or was slightly, you know, felted on top, if it was coated and, it, and the, the tips got a little bit cotted, all of those things will make for a fleece that doesn't mill well. Um, so I'm going to say that first off is that it may not have just been the mill's fault. It could have been just that the fleece, when it got in there, it just didn't process well. That said, assuming that it was a beautiful fleece and it shouldn't have had that issue. And I will say being a miller gives you a better insight on how a fleece is going to process. Um, but Pat, I know you were unhappy with it and maybe it would have been great if they would have said, hey, this fleece is pilling a lot before they process the whole thing. I don't know, I don't know. But I'm just gonna always throw out for the mill's sake that um, just because a fiber looks good doesn't mean it's gonna process well. Uh, that said, is there anything you can do to save the fleece? Well, I mean, honestly, I would say just spin it. If there's too many nips to pull out, I would just spin it knowing it's going to be a textured yarn and just appreciate it for that. Um, you could obviously pull the nefs out. You could try to pull a little bit of it out if it's in roving and see if you card it out yourself, if some of those nefs will card out. Uh, those are probably your best options, but all is not lost. If you can spin it and just know that it's gonna have texture, it will probably still make a beautiful yarn, just texture. Uh, and then somebody else asked, oh, on Instagram they asked, how do I use my hands? <laughs> like, how did I get comfortable using my hand spun? Because to this person, it was so precious, their hand spun, that they have a hard time actually using it. My response to that person was, maybe try work, like getting enough wool to work on a specific project, maybe even a big project, but or a small project, and then spin it with that project in mind. Like, I have this pattern, I'm going to do it and I'm gonna spin this for that specific thing and then get it straight on the needles or the hook or the loom or whatever that project is gonna be. Don't give it too much thought. As soon as you finish it, rinse it, get it on because um, the sheep are always gonna make more wool. And I think this person was using stuff from their own flock which does make it feel more precious but reality is every year they're gonna kick out more and it's easy to get, it's easy to get behind on if you have enough animals. Even three animals is a lot of animals if you're, you know, doing the whole process so um but having a project in mind is one way to do it okay so i wanted to show you a show and tell that is not my show and tell and wish i'm gonna have to kick you off she settled in on my lap but it is a show and tell that is beautiful nonetheless and it's sitting here behind me and look at this beauty so this is hopefully you can see the whole thing yes Look at those colors, you all. Um, this is the Odyssey by Hohi Locatelli. My friend Wendy, Wendy from Eugene, because there's a lot of Wendy's, a lot of wonderful Wendy's in my life. Uh, Wendy from Eugene knitted this up and then brought it into share. And the yarn she used is the Utopia yarn that I have here. It's in the online shop also. Um, Look at, and these colors are all in stock, although I will tell you, and I'll put in the show notes a link and tell you what colors they are because I can't remember off the top of my head. But this bottom color, I only have a few skeins of because they didn't have any to restock at the time. Uh, this yarn is spectacular. It's a blend of fine wools. It's all dyed in the wool and then um, spun into yarn. So it just has a beautiful kind of variations in the colors. It's very soft, even more soft once it's like, Wendy came in with a bunch of samples for another project she's working on and we were all astounded by how much more soft and loft it got when it was uh, worked up and then soaked. So um, anyway, show you again here. I'm trying to convince her that these colors are my, are perfect for me but honestly they're perfect for her too so I'm not having a lot of luck which I don't blame her but I'm just gonna show you okay so show and tell that I did not finish and I actually am doing my Sophie scarf in the same Utopia yarn a different color and um, hopefully by the time I get back into town next week it'll be done because I am on the decreases and it's a small project 
so many projects. Okay, um, Wendy, thank you for sharing that. And the Utopia yarn is in. I've talked about it on other episodes, so you can always pop back and look for it. Uh, okay, what else is going on, you all? We talked about East Spinners, viewer questions. I wanted to mention that my course for beginners to learn to hand spin is going to be available again at the end of this month of October. I can't believe it's October. If you are beginning in hand spinning, if you are have been in it, but you're having issues, you don't understand your wheel, maybe you're not using the right fiber, or if you're a total newbie, my course will be available at the end of the month. And it does include a Zoom portion that will start in the beginning of November where there'll be a weekly Zoom uh, so that you can come in, touch bases, meet with other people that are learning and discuss things and ask questions of me. So keep an eye out for that. You can get on the wait list over on my website. I will put a link in the show notes. It is a wonderful course. It is proven to get you spinning. So if you're having issues, which is how I was when I started, I had a heck of a time learning. Maybe this course is for you. I did want to mention that I am noticing that new spinning wheels are seeming to open up. I did see on Woolery that they had some um, Kiwi 3s available. Uh, I haven't checked Revolution Fibers, but I would guess they do as well. I'm guessing there's been a restock on all fronts. Um, I think the Lendrums are still out, uh, but the Kiwi 3s are great to begin with and other wheels are starting to pop up a little more. At least they're getting restocks of them. So I do have affiliate links for Woolery and for Revolution Fibers. So I'll put those in the show notes too, in case you decide to buy something. It just for all the referrals I give out, they give me a little bit back, which is nice. So always appreciated if you use those. Um, Speaking of the course launching, I do have a new resource up on my website. In the Wool School section of my website, there's a ton of free materials for hand spinners. Um, if you're trying to learn more, if you're new to it, all the things. So I did a new one that is all about fiber prep, talks about the difference between poonies and roving and wool top and bats kind of talks about the description of what makes them different besides a little bit of how they look. And I also talk about the breeds I recommend for beginners when you're learning to hand spin. The more you understand fiber and the more you have the right fiber, the better off your hand spinning learning journey is going to be. So wool school section, I will put a link in the note show notes. I think it's towards the bottom. Um, I can't remember where it is, honestly, but there's so many great uh, valuable resources on there that are all free. And uh, I'm hoping by the end of this week to have the first email going out with some of the wheels that I have got used that I can ship here in the mill. I've shipped out several wheels now and it's quite a learning experience for me as well. I'm really getting hands on into wheels. Uh, so I have a couple used ones that will be in the newsletter as well as a couple people around um, that have used wheels for sale also. So you can join that also in the wool school section I'm pretty sure that's at the bottom if you wanna get your name just on that newsletter, or not just, but to get that newsletter. And um, if you're on my email list, you will not necessarily get that because I'm trying to not bother you all too much in email. Okay, is that all? I think that's all I have to talk about. I may throw a mill video in here, I'm not sure. I'm heading to Lambtown festival wool festival down in dixon california i leave on wednesday which is just two days from now um so when you're watching this i will be there and getting lots of video of what the festival is like uh so i'm leaving on wednesday i've got class all day thursday all day friday a spinning class with jillian moreno a indigo dyeing class with brooke signs of sincere sheep I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce her last name uh, Saturday morning, I'm going to a quick tour of Valley Oak Wool Mill, who they've been on the, I did a little interview with them several months ago. So I'm going to go check out her mill, which is super exciting. And then I'm going to spend all the rest of Saturday at the festival and exceptionally excited about the fleece sale. So, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And then I get to see a couple friends in Sacramento cause that's where I grew up on my way homeward. So it's going to be a big week. So I will definitely have video for you all next week that I will share from Lambtown. Um, and I'm excited to take all of my classes. Okay, let's go watch some videos. They're all pretty quick uh, and then we'll get out of here and you all get on with your week and I will see you in a minute. Okay.
we're at the draw frame and this is some Romney roving that it was in roving form and I dyed it up because I was just playing with the idea of seeing how well some of these fibers can dye up in roving form so I'm running it through the draw frame because one way to counteract any like tightness or not quite felting but just kind of tightness that happens when I'm dyeing it in roving form is to run it through the draw frame and you can see it kind of just getting opened back up again which will make it a breeze to hand spin. So anyway, I'm just kind of playing with the idea of dyeing some stuff up, dyeing more stuff up and roving because you can play with colors in a different way. So you can see it coming out. And it's also making this a little bit, it's drafting it while it's running it through so that, so it's coming out a lot thinner. There it is. Just thought it was kind of, just something I'm playing with here and thought I would show you. These colors maybe don't go together so well. Although now that they're getting stretched out, drafted out a little bit, they are a little less obnoxious together. All right, that's all just showing some playing at the mill today. Okay, we are here back in my studio again. I'm spending a lot of time out here these days, which my husband loves. So I have got, this is some roving from way back. And um, this is Rommeldale. And you can see there's a little bit of pilling in that. Um, but it still spins up beautifully, has a little bit more texture, but fine wools, you know, if they're not, they don't always card up perfectly. So I've got some roving here. And then in this tub here, which is just a old baby spinach tub, which I keep some of my fibers in to keep them safe. This is Pygora and this is Cuddlebug, our goat. This is some that I dehaired long ago when I had a dehair. Um, so I'm going to be blending up. This is what I was doing on my drop spindle, which I'll show you again. I'm trying to make sure my microphone doesn't get too. So here are some poonies that I've done before. And sorry, the dogs are all here and they're all just cruising around <laughs> trying to figure out how to get comfortable. And here is what I have been uh, spinning up of this. And since I'm going out of town, uh, obviously, even though I'll have my wheel I'm taking my magic craft rose and I will have my nano two, my little teeny e spinner. Um, it never hurts to have a drop spindle with you with some ready to go poonies. So, what I'm going to do, and obviously you could just use locks, but because I had this and um, because I had this and I thought it would be pretty with Cuddlebug. So I'm just going to take a big strip off of it and start and all. This is how I like to do it, but obviously everybody has their own way, but I'm just going to go ahead and start and I just go across and I'm just gently holding down the fibers as I kind of pull out so that it leaves a little chunk of uh, fiber there. And I'll just go across and, uh, sorry, you can hear the little click of my board there. I'm not sure if I can make it not do that. No, apparently not. There, it's a little bit better. So I'll just go across and fill this up and I won't make you watch every single thing, but you can see I just am putting a little, putting the end down, sticking my hand on it and doing a little pull just to keep it in place. There is nothing perfect about how I'm doing this. I'm just going along kind of however, and generally as I finish up, then I'll go back sometimes and fill in any gaps. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this layer and then I will come back to you all Okay, so I have my first layer 
of um, Rommel Diller there. So now I'm gonna take some Cuddlebug and I'm just gonna grab a little handful of it. A little bit of Pygora does go a long way, so I won't do it quite as, um, so I'm just going along and doing the same thing and we'll organize it here in just a minute. I probably could have tamped down that wool first, but we're gonna put a little cuddle bug and then we're gonna tamp it down. Again, everybody's gonna have their own way of doing this. So I kind of have a little bit of fiber on there and now I'm gonna grab my, and this is an Ashford blending board, just in case you were wondering. So now I'm gonna grab this little brush that comes with it. And I'm just gonna go in and start pushing down. And I have found, and the Pygora does like to kind of come back with you. So I kind of go across the top and you can see I just put the bristles in, give it a little push, and then I kind of round up so that the fiber doesn't come off with me. And I just work my way down like that. And sometimes the fiber comes up, no big deal if it does. So I'll just work my way across, pushing down and doing a little, tilt on it. Try not to get your hands in the way because there isn't much carding cloth out there that feels good when you squish your hands on it. Definitely I have drawn plenty of blood, especially at work <laughs> when I'm doing something like cleaning the carter or, you know, it's just really easy to catch your hands on these. So I'm just going to go through doesn't have to be perfect. Put as much or as little fiber as you want. So I like to get that first little bit on there. And then what I'm gonna do is I may fill in a little bit more Cuddlebug. I may fill in a little more Rommeldale. Um, but I think what I'll do, actually, I think what I'll do is put just a little more Cuddlebug. I don't put a ton of Cuddlebug in this because you just don't need a lot for the Pygora to make a big difference fill in some spots, and then I'm just gonna start again with my Rami. And obviously you can do whatever fibers you want. I have found that it's easier to work with shorter fibers on a blending board, but um, you may have found differently and that's okay. I'm sure anyone who wants to comment about their blending board, please feel free. I hope my microphone hasn't just gotten all crazy while I'm doing this. I'm hoping it's behaving, but I'm just gonna go back through and I won't make you watch it all. So hopefully I can zip through this. Um, and then, yeah, and then. All right, here we go again. So I'm just gonna do the same thing I did before. And I kind of use my hand to keep the locks below it in line a little bit. And we just go through again. And it's okay if your fibers pull out a little bit. This is yours. It doesn't have to be perfect unless you want it to be. And then make it perfect. I'm just going through, pushing everything down again. And I'll probably do one more layer, pack a little bit more on here. I don't fill them too crazy because, you know, I don't mind making them. So, and I like my poodies to not be super, when they're really tight, it's just kind of a pain to spin them. So I think I'll do one more little layer and then pull this off. Okay, so here we go. Make sure my microphone's good. And um, I like to leave just a little bit at the bottom here because it just gives me something to kind of grip at. So we've got our two dowels here and we're just gonna kind of wrap our fiber. I usually do this sitting on the floor for some reason. So I kind of had to use my knees. I like to use my knees to um, kind of hold the, blending board in place because once you start to pull out your puny, the blending board is going to slide a little bit. So you put a little bit here and you can see I just wrapped it around one and the other one I've got lined up and you kind of grip them together so you can start to pull. And let's see if I can do it from this angle. You just are giving a little kind of upward 
just a little upward tug and then a slide a little tug and i'm not sure i'm gonna pull in so you can really see as i do this and then you give it a so a little pull and you remember when you're doing this your idea is that your fibers are getting a little more aligned right and a little bit carded out so you want a little you can see i kind of just pull and then wrap pull a little bit and i've got a little angle here to help kind of lift it up and you can make your punies as big as you want or as small as you want depending on um, how much you filled this is kind of going to depend if you do them too big it's going to be really tight um, so i don't do them too big i usually do three to four times i'll roll up so i'm just going to go ahead and say okay let's do this one so i'm going to leave a little bit kind of loose on the board there and i'm just going to pull out so there we go and then i just kind of wrap let me pull out again and then you're just and if you did this really tight it's going to be hard to get these dowels apart but we've all probably been there I, I have anyway so if you end up in that spot but then you just are going to go ahead and push one dowel so i just kind of push it one one direction push the other the other direction and then you can as you get a little bit grip you can pull one out and then you just slide this one right off and there is your puny now if you roll a bunch on here your puny is going to be pretty tight to spin and you can kind of loosen them up like give them a good shake before you go to spin you could draft a little bit but then you're ready to just start spinning from either end really um and you can spin away okay i'll do one more for you here and then um hopefully you'll have a good idea of feel a little bit more confident a lot of it is just playing but you can see this is why i like to leave just a little bit here so i can wrap a little bit and get a start on it because otherwise it's kind of a pill and i'm not great at um holding really tight i don't know why i just can't grip my uh, dowels very well so it helps me to have some extra and then just give it a little pull and start your wrapping And that's all there is to it if you get some that's not pulling just kind of hold on to it in that spot and then as you wrap hold it just to get it kind of accustomed to that turning part sometimes it doesn't catch well so you just use your fingers until it's catching and you can go along and pick some of this up because i'm going to do more of this i don't really mind if there's a little bit of it left on the blending board but and I sometimes will use my hands to kind of brace a little bit, especially as we get up higher. And then you can kind of pull. All right. And this one is about ready. I'll just yank some of that out and wrap it on there. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull a little bit out. So I've got some extra to grip the next time. Just kind of roll that around. And then we take our dowel out again. And if you don't do them too big, then it's gonna be a lot easier to get your dowel out. But sometimes you just have to struggle a little bit. And there's your next one. Okay, there you go. There's my blending board magic. I hope that helps some of you. All right, let's see our transformation. Whoopsie, that wasn't a very pretty way to do that. So, look at that. I'm gonna rinse it off. And uh, that's just off of like a super quick soak. So I'm gonna rinse it off and let it dry and then I'll show you all the difference from before. Okay, you all, so I have got some dirty water, <laughs> but I have got a little bit of that Coopworth fleece and I just wanted to show it to you. Um, I decided I was gonna wash a little sample of it up so people could see and this is some dirty water that I just took because I'm washing, ooh, that's warm. Um, another fleece so I was just gonna let that sit so that people could see you all could see not just people you all could see how well the Coopworth washes up of that fleece I have also it's just fun but I'm gonna cover this up so it can sit for a few minutes and uh, then I'll show you what it looks like and the water's dirty 
because I just pulled it out of the wash tub from something else I'm washing that is much dirtier than this fleece. All right, you ready to see the difference? Isn't that crazy? I literally just put that into some dirty, <laughs> as you saw, some dirty water with a little bit of power scour in it. And that was one soak in it for like 10 minutes. And that's how this fleece looks. So I thought I would just show it to you again, just in case anybody interested. It's a hundred percent coop worth. All right. Message me if you're interested. This is what it's like when the chickens are all demanding something and I'm moving too slow. They just circle me. It's intense. They have a routine and I have broken it. Here come the others. <laughs> then we have this little crew, which is the last batch from the summer and those two are frizzle bantams so they have kind of curly feathers and they're itsy bitsy although they're decent size we'll see how much more they grow okay i gotta give them some kibble because they came all this way and everybody else is up there so they won't get bullied too much all right we're back over here which is such a lovely place i don't have to balance I can have the kibble out and they can just disperse themselves around hi June June's waiting for her breakfast there's mama and I'm gonna try to get the heck out of here As they figure out they just run back and forth Chickens try to get in to get kibble, but okay. <laughs> There's a chicken. <laughs> All right, everybody loves the cuddle bug dance because this we tie him up because he will otherwise during meals that is because he will otherwise bully the alpaca out of their kibble. So he gets a little bit of kibble on the way back. He gets kibble and then he gets more kibble. So he does this little dance as I'm coming back. And you can see June is happily eating her kibble that has lots of supplements in it. And then the sheep are just on the other side there. All right, last stop to the piggies. They had breakfast. And they're already out. Huh, Frankie? Already out. Getting serious with the grass. Huh, Johnny? They just needed to make a cameo, of course. I know. I know. Being a pig is so hard. So hard. Being a pet pig, I should say. All right, guys, I gotta get to work. Uh-oh. Oh, we're going down. No way around it now. <laughs> Frankie's MO. All right. You've probably had enough. Onward! Okay. I hope you learned something new in there. Uh, I should mention that the Coopworth fleece did sell as did randomly that roving that was on the draw frame that I showed you, which I hadn't really meant to sell. And honestly, I thought the colors were not that beautiful until it went through the draw frame and then I was in love. And the draw frame, um, I'm gonna play with more. So anyway, both of those things are sold, but I still wanted to put the Coopworth in there showing you how easy some of these fleeces will wash up, even though they look a little bit dingy, or the person that bought the Coopworth is new to washing, new to this whole hand spinning and processing world. And so I was like, this is going to be a fabulous fleece that you've ended up with because I literally just stuck it in some soapy but dirty water and it came out sparkling white. So um, 
I just wanted to share that with you all. There will be more fleeces coming. I know Maria has sent me some pictures of some beautiful lamb fleeces and Coopworth fleeces. Uh, they don't move as easily as the Romneys. And so there will be some more of those because I think they are underestimated. And Coopworth washes up to this like pausa of a white. So anyway, um, I hope you all learned something from that. Enjoyed seeing the animals. I think that's it. I'm going to bow out so I can finish up here at the mill and then finish up farm chores and all the things so I can get out of town. But thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time, stay healthy, be kind to your neighbor, and make so many pretty things. I will see you soon. Thank you so much.